Glass is very versatile. It's mostly made of sand. Um, the desert sand that you guys have really close to you in those windstorms, a lot of that is silica. It's got some other particles in it, of course, um, but it has silica in it. And if you've ever heard of silicosis, breathing in that sand, it never comes out of your lungs. There's certain things that come out of your lungs like plaster dust or wood dust or whatever, but when you're breathing in silica, it never comes out. Once it accumulates in the bottom of your lungs, it begins to have issues and you can get silicosis, so you should keep that in mind. Um, heated glass becomes molten and easily shaped and um, the chemical process never changes, meaning that um, once it's glass, it's 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 glass, if that makes sense. Also, the same thing when it's melted, it, it's it's the same material, put it that way, when it's liquid, melted, and it's the same material when it hardens and it's solid. Does that make sense? Clay is not that in that way, and the book makes that differentiation. When you're working with clay, it changes molecular in a molecular way, and some things get burned away. Okay, to make it into ceramic. Glass blowing, I'm going to let you look into that a little bit. Uh, and then stained glass. This example that we get from the book is the stained glass. I want you guys to do the art project, very similar to the mosaic. Um, and I'm talking about doing a panel like this size. It doesn't have to have this much detail by any stretch, um, but something simple. You can even do one segment like this. Um, so stained glass, these pigments that we studied, if you go backtrack, uh, into the painting uh, module. There's a pigments uh, PowerPoint much like this one and the pigments are really the same. So the pigments are the same in clay typically uh, and the pigments are the same in glass. It's just raw dirt that we get out of the earth with a color in it and then we mix it with glass or we mix it with clay or we mix it with oil for paint. Got it? So there's a lot of beautiful pigments in here. And then these are leaded bars. There's a little more metal to it than that, a little more structure than that. And then there's leaded little structures in here to sort of hold the different paints. Because there's only so large you can make these little segments, especially, you know, in 1150. Medieval times, <clears throat> cathedrals, the height of stained glass. Metal. We're going to look at forging and casting. We already talked about casting, but this is on a smaller scale. Forging is metal hammered by blows. So I'm going to do this is kind of backward the way I did these slides, sorry. So this is tiny. This is like an inch and a half um, high. You know, they're tiny little objects. So this is just hammered out soft metal gold. So you just hammer it out and it's, it'll take these different shapes. You hammer it out over a roundish shape, and then the way it's attached here is sort of like welding, but it's called soldering, and it's sometimes called brazing. Um, so these little beads are put on under heat, like they're manufactured first. Somebody rolled out these little, these little beads and did all this design work, and then they kind of heated the piece up and put them there, heated them, and attached them. Not as hot as, as actual welding with steel, it's a softer metal. Okay, I'm going to backtrack to our piece here, the uh, Aqua Manile from Nuremberg. So this is a cast piece. This is more of a bronze alloy. And I've always wondered if, because it's supposed to pour water out, I wonder if this thing pours water out as well as his, in, in his mouth, or just here. It's a little confusing. Um, so... There's a handle on this. This is a functional object, and again, earrings were functional, right? So we're looking at a lot of functional objects for the most part. Um, this had a, a ritual meaning uh, in use. It was to wash the priest's hands um, before a service. There's a thing called ablutions that, um, that Muslims do before prayer, and also um, within the Catholic Church you see like a holy water or a font, a water, like a little tray for water to wash your hands before you come in to the church. So there's something to do with water uh, quite frequently in um, religious ceremony. Wood, I'm going to stop.